This channel is about more than just history. I'm always trying to find different ways to talk about history to hopefully attract more people. Because let's face it, not everybody loves history as much as we do. Although I think that they should, because history is very awesome. So today, instead of talking directly about history, I thought I could talk about mythology. Now, they're not actual events that we have documented proof of, but they do give us an insight as to how people lived and how people saw the world back then. So in that sense, it kind of does count as history. As I'm sure you all know, when we're talking about mythology, we usually tend to talk about the Greek version of it. I mean, the most popular version of mythology is about the Greek gods. And this week, we're talking about just that. We're talking about the story of Achilles and the Trojan War. To be honest, it's one of my favorite stories. It's been a long two weeks, my exams are done, I'm ready to be back, and I'm happy to be back. Welcome to Flux of Knowledge. Perhaps you've seen the movie Troy starring Brad Pitt. That's personally how I was introduced to the myth. It's a very long movie, but it's well worth the watch. But even if you haven't seen the movie, I mean, this is a very popular myth that I'm sure that a lot of you are familiar with. As you all are probably used to by now, and I hope that you haven't forgotten, you know the drill, let's put all this in historical context and get some background. Although this is a myth, it's a story, it's not really something that actually happened, there's no real historical context, but it is important to talk about the background of the story. In the 8th century BC, in ancient Greece, there was a great poet by the name of Homer. Not Homer Simpson, but just Homer. He was a great poet and he had two big poems, the Iliad and the Odyssey, and those big poems are really considered central works in Greek literature. In Homer's Iliad, one of his two great poems, we find the story of Achilles and the Trojan War. Now the story's main focus is on a dispute between Achilles and his king Agamemnon, but the story also touches on the Trojan War that has been going on for about a decade when the story starts. The story features many great heroes like Achilles himself, the king Agamemnon, the two Trojan princes Hector and Paris, and of course the very beautiful Helen, who was the cause of all of this chaos. So without further ado, let's start painting the background of our story. The story talks about Achilles' birth, and like most mythological heroes, Achilles had a very complicated family tree. He was born of a mortal and a narrate. Now a narrate is simply a divine creature, not quite a god, but if she were to have a child with a god, that child would become immortal. Since her father was not a god, Achilles was born a mortal, and the mother, well, she really wasn't happy with this. She was constantly worried about her son's mortality. She just didn't want to see him die, so she plotted a way to make him immortal. And this being a Greek myth, you can be sure that she found a way. Now, there was this great river that legend has it would grant immortality to anybody that went in it. So the mother, as a sort of a last resort after having tried many other things, dumped Achilles in the river to try to make him immortal. But she didn't want the river to take her son away, so she held him by the heel. And since she held him by the heel, well, the heel never actually touched the water and it never became immortal, something that the mother didn't really think about at the time. And this is a very important detail that's going to be very important at the end of the story, as you can probably tell. I'm sorry for the spoilers. Achilles was now immortal, so to speak, and in theory that should have been okay. The only problem is that an oracle had predicted a few years later that Achilles would die heroically in battle against the Trojans. And I think we all know from experience, oracles are usually right. So now let's talk about the Trojan War. What is it? Well, it was a war that had been going on for about 10 years before the events of Homer's Iliad, and it was a war between the Greeks and the Trojans. It eventually reached a stalemate with neither side really able to make any sort of progress. According to the legend, the Trojan War began when the Greek god Zeus wanted to reduce the population on Earth by starting a war between the Greeks and the Trojans. And to do that, the gods persuaded the young and naive Trojan prince Paris to take as his wife Helen, the most beautiful wife there ever was. The only problem was that Helen was already married to somebody else, Menelaus, the king of Sparta, part of Greece. As you can probably tell, this wasn't going to end well. When Menelaus found out, he assembled a massive army, brought Achilles with him, and went straight for Troy. So that's kind of the background of our story. This is the point where the Iliad begins. Now remember I mentioned that the Iliad talks about a conflict between Achilles and Agamemnon? Well, that's exactly what we're about to see right now. Agamemnon, in a prior battle, took a Trojan woman as his wife. Now this made perfect sense because it was really common at those times. You would take wives as prizes of war. The only problem was that he made the same mistake that Paris did. He took the wrong woman. Now the woman that he took, her father was a priest of Apollo. So the father asked Apollo to get his wife back, which he did. Agamemnon, now without a wife, well actually probably had a lot more, still affected by the loss of his wife, he wanted compensation so he took Achilles' wife. Like really, you had to take Achilles' wife like you couldn't take anybody else, like you have thousands of soldiers, you had to take Achilles? 
Achilles, he gave her away because Agamemnon was the king and you kind of had no choice. You had to obey the king's orders. But Achilles chose not to fight with the Greeks anymore, which coincidentally turned the tide of the war. Because in Greek mythology, one man can make the entire difference. Now, after the Oracle's prediction, Achilles' mother went and asked a divine blacksmith to make for Achilles a very strong sword and a very strong armor to protect him in battle. Now, that armor was unique. It was one of a kind. And if the Trojans saw it in battle, they knew that it meant that Achilles was fighting. Now, since Achilles wasn't fighting anymore for the Greeks, his best friend went and took his armor to disguise himself as Achilles because he thought that if he wore his armor, the Trojans would be scared and this would turn the tide of the war. That didn't really work because, well, he was no Achilles. The Trojan prince Hector eventually found him and killed him in front of everybody. If you've seen the movie Troy, then that scene was very powerful. It was very emotional. Now with his best friend killed, Achilles had a reason to get back in the fight. Achilles vowed to get revenge and to kill Hector. He personally went all the way to Troy's gates, fought Hector in front of the city gates, and because Achilles was immortal, he eventually killed Hector. Then he further humiliates Hector by dragging his body all the way down to the Greek shores. Achilles then regrets his decision to humiliate Hector and eventually gives back the body to his father for a proper burial. It's actually a nice turn of the story. Enjoy it because it's all downhill from here. At least depending on who you cheer for. In Homer's Iliad, it's not really explained what happened to Achilles. We don't really get to read about his death. But don't worry, I got you covered. There are other writings that talk about Achilles' death. And since this is a myth, I think we can all collectively agree to just go with it and enjoy the rest of the story. I'm going to talk about what happened in the movie because it's really the version that I know the best and feel most comfortable talking about. Now I think we all know what a Trojan horse is. I mean, it's a very popular topic and it's even what some computer viruses are called. The Greeks wanted a way to get into the city of Troy, but they never could because the walls were too high and they were too strong. Like the walls were just too high to climb and they were so durable you couldn't really destroy them. Plus you also have an army to deal with. So instead of going in full force, they decided to play a little game of chess, or should I say a very big game of chess. They built a giant wooden horse, which they offered as a gift to the Trojans that had a lot of soldiers inside the horse. I mean, it was a very big horse. Now the Trojans, they had no idea. So when it was night, when the moment that they least expected it, the soldiers came out of the horse and began attacking the city of Troy. The city now under attack and with Hector now dead, there was only one prince of Troy left, Paris. And Achilles was right around the corner. Paris, although not a very brave soldier, he spots Achilles. He shoots an arrow that goes straight for Achilles' heel, killing him instantly. It is believed that Apollo was the one that guided the arrow straight to his heel. Because Achilles was never fully dumped in the immortal river, his heel was always his weakness. Now, you normally shouldn't die from an arrow to the heel, but I think we can all just let it slide and say that Achilles died heroically in battle, just like the oracle had predicted. So that's kind of a simplified version of this great story. I think that the lessons we can all take here is that we all have a weakness no matter who we are. We should never anger the gods because they will get back at us, and we should never accept the horse as a gift. So now here are my questions to you. I'm gonna ask them more generally and just ask you, what do you think about myths? Like Roman myths, Greek myths, or just myths in general. What do you think about them? Because I personally really like them and I would love to make more videos about them in the future. So please do leave me a comment and bonus points for you if you do leave your comment, you might get featured in next week's video as a fan of the week. As you know, and as I say at the end of every video, I haven't really talked about everything and the things that I did talk about, I haven't gone into too much detail. That's okay, I'm actually doing this on purpose because I want you guys to go out and research and maybe learn a thing or two. With that being said, my name has been Darius Kozin, you can follow me on social media and also make sure to check out my second channel where I talk about everything that I do on this channel, link is in the description. It's been an absolute pleasure and I will see you all next week.